Signy, all guns blazing, is distributed by Konami, can you believe? And from a company called Keel Works, who was Scotland based, an ex animation studio. It's a similar story to Keen of Bridges Spirits. This is a very pretty game. How can you tell it's an Eastern publisher? Because there's a straight woman in it. I am Couch Coop. <laughs> Signy, taken from the Latin Cygnus, which is a reference to a star constellation. The ship you're flying is actually called the Orca, which I'm assuming is a whale reference. And Cygnus is also associated with the swans. It's all fairly self-explanatory. This is running on Unreal Engine 4. Two things to remember with this video game. It is available physical on the PlayStation 5. I've seen the damn thing on the shelves. I got lucky and pulled this off the Epic Store for the month that it was free. You may have done the same thing and not actually looked at it. This is a blind in shoot 'em up just on its own single player and I actually discovered the local co-op purely by accident. Wasn't pushed or advertised to me. I can't believe smaller developers are still doing this, not giving me a heads up on their games and not allowing me to expose them to 20,000 people plus. This game came out in April this year so I'm well behind the release date mark. This is not just your standard shoot 'em up. Some deep meta mechanics attached to the power up system and your basic controls. So left stick is moving that ship around, right stick is tilting your arc of fire. I reckon you've got about 30, 20 degrees. Very cool idea, being able to come in at this acute angle if you're trying to hit a boss weak spot or something. But it does confuse the brain a little bit because I have two sort of modes of thought when it comes to shoot 'em ups. One of them is twin stick, and the other one is that full on locked shmup game model that we've all been used to since the 80s this sort of blends them both together it does take a little bit of getting used to but once the penny drops it's a very natural feeling mechanic Distinguishing the two ships I thought was going to be a lot tougher. One of them is a full-on gold, so you can always see them standing out. But we kind of chose what side of the screen to exist on, so there wasn't too much confusion. When we got close together, it was a bit iffy on who's who. If you give the game a couple of hours, you sort of settle into just existing on that side of the screen. But sometimes you've got to pass over with tricky boss fights. But none of it was massively disruptive. Can you see how we were both focused on the ground enemy at that point? And you have a L2 to change where your guns are gonna be firing, whether it's air to air or air to ground. Some shooters really push this mechanic and this one dabbles with it. Not enough as far as I'm concerned. Underneath you there's this battle raging with this really cool like Matrix, Sentinel-esque, almost organic looking beings having a big war with what seems to be a human race. And you're getting involved, you're helping them out, you're killing some of the tanks. The idea of having a two tier firing mechanic within a scrolling shooter like this is pretty cool. And the graphics hold it up brilliantly. Let's talk about this upgrade and energy mechanic. As you can see, the entire game, it revolves around getting these little icons, these little drops. Basically, they're points that you can pump into, giving your shield a replenish on a single cell front, or pumping them into your missiles and gunfire power. This is a tricky one to do on the fly. You have to tap the L buttons to add the additional point that you've collected, and keeping an eye on that health constantly when it's not really shown against your ship is quite a tricky thing. To be on the safe side always pumping stuff into your health and always avoiding the gunfire is the way forward Bosses don't hold back on being pretty massive and epic and set piece like and if you can see the ground on this one there is a war going on and I can pluck out enemy units to get some of those replenish icons whilst fighting this massive dude with the claws.
it does hit you constantly how well animated and good looking every single asset is in this video game. That goes down to the explosions, the way the scrolling works, and some of the two tier systems with the backgrounds and structures that you have to navigate around when progressing through some of the later levels. difficulty I think is going to shock you a little bit if you're not really clued up on exactly how their energy replenish system works and the upgrades on the missile system you're going to take loads of hits and not be able to replenish and barely make it to the first boss this is on medium People that made this game clearly know how to make a very good looking shooter. Whether they understand the integral milestones that make a good shoot 'em up campaign is another kettle of fish. The bosses come regularly enough, you get mid tier bosses also, but there are large sections where there's a lot of repeat enemies and a lot of environments just keep scrolling past and you begin to find yourself thinking, we need a change, I want something else to come up and kick me in the arse full-blown switch to a land vehicle wouldn't have gone amiss with a reverse take on those controls that may be something that comes up in later game we got to around the third boss there looks to be five major stages and stage one is big you haven't got a middle of the level restart point or anything like that you screw up you are right back to that initial intro that we saw at the start of the video also didn't manage to completely comprehend the respawn system when someone dies. You are prompted to press B but sometimes that just does nothing and I think you have to have your shield tabs up full to be able to call that other player back in. Can I get some confirmation on this in the comments please? I very much want to buy this physical. It's sitting at $22 digitally on the PlayStation Store, but I think in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to find something that's worth pulling off the shelves and having as a PlayStation edition, because I think these graphics would benefit from a ninth gen. My PC was taking this on Ultra, but I saw a lot of frame dips, particularly in those transition sections where there's loads of stuff flying around. It was definitely noticeable. It didn't default to Ultra, it stuck to high, but as always, <laughs> I'll try and push that poor GTX. Why am I excited about this game? Well, it's a couple of things. It's an old format that's given a current gen makeover and some new additions. It's a local co-op and a brand new video game, which is always really cool. It's from Konami, which means they're not completely dead in the water. They are still flailing around after the loss of the Metal Gear series. And we've had that Silent Hill remake get pushed out. On later levels with this game, you'll see it really starts flexing with its visuals, particularly its background and smoke effects. Also the two tier system with enemies sitting on structures, it also split us up at one point where we had to fend for ourselves on a separation within the screen. It's got some cool ideas but more importantly it's got some massive really well animated and good looking bosses. And the shoot 'em up scene is just not revisited enough, I don't feel. And I've put a video together of the top local co ops that I've come across. There's stuff like Jamestown, even a local co op R type, Project Starship X, which is like this, but a roguelike, slightly more retro graphics. I will link that video in the description. It's getting a bit old now, so I may pull some new local co op shooters together. It 
here comes that aforementioned graphics flex. Check out this smoke and mist beneath us here. These structures, you have to shoot stuff to sneak through gaps. It does push that bullet hell vibe kind of perfectly. And enjoying that with someone else on the couch is definitely worth a look. And it's also not terrible on the single player. So if you see this around at a reasonable price, I thoroughly recommend getting involved. Also always check the Epic Store religiously every month because they keep dropping really good double A and indie local cult games for free. We just had that Astro Duel, which I put up against Spider Heck. I will link that in the video also. Again, that is a space-based, but it's a PVP arena game. Got it absolutely free, had loads of hours of awesome local PVP gameplay out of it. If it nearly beats Spider Heck, it is not a bad game. My next video is going to be the Black Ops 6 zombie split screen local cult review. It's a huge one for the channel, maybe one of my bigger videos of the year. Please click that button, do the notification, hang around for that. It's going to be pretty massive. I was Couch Coop. I will see you down there.